Hello. So, first things first. Gun is clear. This is my Bull Armory SAS 2 Ultralight. Um, so I want to kind of talk about a couple of things. Um, so I've been seeing a lot of uh, folks, or not a lot of folks. I, I'm seeing maybe three or four folks having a, a couple of issues with the gun, and they're making a lot of noise on this uh, Bull Armory subreddit and the 2011 subreddit. Um, the issue is is that the gun is fine up until the second to the last round and then the gun generates a failure failure to feed uh those same folks are also insisting that there's something wrong with the mag because let me see here let me see if i can hear, hear that i think that's a a round that that's loose down in the bottom um so my take on this okay let me let me explain a few things. So I've been carrying this gun since April. It is now November of 2023. Uh, I bought the gun in April of 2023. I put a thousand rounds, or right under a thousand rounds, like 989 or something like that, rounds through the gun. Various types of ammo: self-defense ammo, FMJ, flat nose FMJ, light for caliber, um, straight up hot SD ammo. Um, and I have had failures to feed every now and again, but not at that that round, you know, the second to the last round in the mag. Um, and I think, I, so I've had, out of all of those rounds, I've had maybe five failures to feed. So is that in, indicative of something wrong with the gun? No, because one, I, I was testing all this, all this other SD ammo. Um, it's probably not the best thing to do, um, but I was trying to experiment because I wanted to know what, if there was any type of ammo that would choke the gun. So, you know, and then I would say, okay, we'll not carry. Uh, that would be the ammo that I would not carry, right? Um, I did not just kind of try the first one that worked and say, okay, well, that works. I'm going to start using that. Um, I, you know, I bought the gun to have fun with and I want to get a good round count through it. So instead of me just doing it with one type of round or one, you know, you know, manufacturer of ammo, I'm trying all different types and the gun is doing fine. Those ones that, you know, those five or so or six, I think five or six, uh, failures to feed that I had. I almost certainly do to me because I do have a problem with grip discipline. Um, I have to constantly kind of focus on tamping down on the gun. Uh, the gun is already extremely light. It's extremely short. It's closer to three inches in barrel length than it is 3.25. Um, and also the gun, since it's uh, concealed carry friendly, uh, focused, um, what I would like is to see this kind of being more aggressive, but they lightened, you know, they, they went light on their aggressiveness because this is actually the part where, where, you know, however you, however you carry, whether it's appendix or a strong side, this is going to be what's touching your skin or even like your t-shirts. If you wear a t-shirt, um, it's going to tear your skin or your t-shirts up if it's super aggressive. So they lighten that up. And I mean, yeah, that's cool, but I'm not going to lie. In order for me to shoot this gun fast and quick and accurate, move around, um, I have to focus on my grip discipline. Uh, the times where I don't are the times where I, where I've seen those, those failures to feed. Um, so with that being said, uh, these guys, there's, there's three or four of the guys on the, on the subreddit that are making noise saying that they you know they're not outright saying that the gun is shit but they are swearing up and down uh this is an issue for everyone and uh you know i constantly chime in and say well i'm not having any of those issues 
you know. So so the issues are what I just explained. Um, the fact that when they fire, the second to the last round is causing a, a failure to feed. Um, there's also an issue where some folks have been seeing, seeing their uh, optics plate shear off. Um, and there's been one or two folks who reported that their recall spring has kind of come apart. So there, there, there are fixes for, for all of those. So for the, the mag issue of, uh, you know, the, the, the second to the last round generating a failure to feed, like I said, grip display. Uh, if, if this was as those guys are saying, there would be a shitload more people reporting the issue and I will be having the issue and I would have been already bitching about it. And one thing I can't stand is a gun with problems. Uh, but a lot of times when I see, when I have a, I've had at least one gun where I thought I had problems and it turned out that I was the problem. It, it took me looking at range footage because I, I bring a camera to my, you know, when I go shooting sometimes and I see myself shooting and, you know, first person view and I can see myself slapping the trigger, limp wristing or, or kind of just being uh, shitty, you know, using shitty uh, trigger discipline or grip discipline. It's, it all shows on the camera. And, you know, at one point I was going to I was going to to sell a, a gun until I spent like a, a huge amount of uh, time trying to determine if it was me or the gun. You know, I kept suspecting, okay, it's the gun. It's the gun because I've been shooting, you know, I shoot all these guns. I'm, I'm proficient. You know, it's not me. And then I look at the camera footage when I kind of was like, I had that 1% doubt in my head. So I, 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 I purposely put on the camera and then just shot, you know, went to the range and shot, didn't focus on the camera, just focus on shooting. The next day I looked at the footage and I could see myself making all these damn mistakes. So it was me. And if it could happen to me, it could happen to someone else. You know, again, you know, the gun is short. Um, the gun. So you look at this and the first thing you think, damn, that gun is small. It's not as small as a P365, but for 1911, it is small. And uh, I've seen more than one reviewer say, look at it and say, that's going to be a problem at the range. And then they pick it up and they shoot it. And they're like, damn. It's almost, it's not, it's not snappy like I thought it would be. That is what my experience was when I took it to the range. And I'm saying all this because it's like, you think you're an expert at, you know, at gun, owner, gun ownership and gun maintenance and, you know, anything to do with the gun world, you you think you're the subject matter expert and you know everything about it. And then you get a gun that humbles your ass. And uh, I think it's a it's a it shows good character when you can look at yourself and admit that you are wrong in in in, in judging something. I think it shows strong character when you kind of dog but bird dog an issue, swearing up and down that you know it's not you, but you always you know you have that little bit of doubt. Maybe it could be me because I felt like shit when I found out it was me. And I'm like, you know, here I am talking shit about this product. And I still have that gun and I have not had a single issue with it since I've kind of I, I, I know that, you know, some guns require you to not be lazy. And that was that was a that was actually a 1911 heavy as fuck gun, but still. You know, uh, it was commander size, 45 ACP. Um, so uh, probably not as heavy as it would be if it was a, a full size. So maybe I had issues with that. I don't know. Um, but but anyways, what I think is those guys that are on the forums that complaining about this and thinking it's an issue, I think the issue is with them. As well, when I talked about the the optic plate shearing off, there are two pegs or 
studs underneath that mate with two holes on the top of the slide. So granted, there should probably be more than two. But when one person started having, you know, when they had an issue where they sheared it off, they automatically talk shit about the gun in general. The whole gun is like, the whole gun is shit because this optic plate is not optimal. And I'm like, well, I'm not having an issue. And I said that early on in the game when I had, you know, when I had, had only a couple of hundred rounds to the gun. Here I am at almost a thousand and I still haven't had an issue with the optic plate shearing off. What does that tell me? That tells me that someone didn't install their optic plate right. They didn't use the proper screws or they didn't use enough Loctite because when it gets loose and you're shooting and you, you know, maybe shooting SD ammo, it's a lot of power and recoil coming back and it's rattling. And of course, after, over time, those are going to shear off. So if you don't have it tight, and I'm not saying over tighten it, but I'm saying at least tighten it down, you know, torque it down to spec and, and use a proper amount of uh, Loctite so that it doesn't come loose and do that, then it won't happen. How do I know that? Because it hasn't happened to me yet, and that's what I did. You know, so so there's that. Uh, the recoil, um, the recoil spring uh, falling apart. I haven't had that issue yet, but guess what? I went and I bought an additional non Bull Armory OEM uh, recoil spring assembly in case it does break. That way, I can just swap it out. The only thing I haven't done at this point is I haven't tested it and I will be testing it soon uh, to make sure that, uh, you know, that that recoil spring assembly works in this specific gun. Because the one I bought is for a Kimber. Uh, it's one of the smaller Kimbers, I don't know, Kimber Micro, Kimber Solo, uh, one of those two. Um, and, uh, EGW also makes them. A lot of people have been getting the EGW. I decided to try something different. I am always that different type person. Um, so another thing is, you know, and this is going off tangent a little bit, but it's the same thing where I see a lot of people kind of saying that, why would you spend that amount of money when you could just save a little bit more and got a staccato? Oh, well, I'm not, I can't answer for everyone else, but I don't want a staccato. I never wanted a staccato. The reason I bought this is because Everyone owns a staccato out there. Uh, if you go on the 2011 uh, subreddit and the 2011 forums on these groups, they're dominated by people who own staccatos. I don't want to. I don't want something that everyone has. I buy because of uh, aesthetics. Um, this gun uh, fits into the way I want to carry. I wanted something small. I wanted a 1911 platform gun. I wanted double capacity, you know, double stacking. Um, I wanted something that was light and short. And Staccato does all of that, but it doesn't have fluted barrel. Uh, look at that slide. The slide is like, has the, you know, the, the texturing and the, the serrations all over the damn place. Um, it just looks different. When people see this, they don't mistake this for staccato. So, so uh, I I'm, I don't care about well, born in the, you know, made in the USA. Um, you know, if you, in my opinion, if you want, if you're that nationalistic, join the service. Uh, dedicate your time and your life, and you know, sack you know sacrifice some things for your country that that impresses me more than kind of saying well i want something that's made in america yeah that's you i don't really care so much about that um america is a free country so i'm free to buy something foreign made uh and plus i can't stand folks who kind of use that mantra made in the usa but then half the shit that they own isn't made in the USA. There's one guy in particular, I don't want to mention any names, but I used to watch all, you know, they used to do a lot of 1911 videos and they would they would always say that and they wouldn't cover foreign made guns uh, because, you know, made in America and, you know, some of these guys were, uh, you know, uh, Marine veterans and things like that. And you know what, I, I get it. 
I get it. You want the money that you that you use to buy something to stay in the U.S. ecosystem. I understand it. But if we had more people that were more focused on serving and, and being humble about shit, I think the world, you know, our country would be a better place, to be honest. I don't really care so much about the money because if I buy a Kinnick and Kinnick USA has factories and things here and they're building, who's, who's putting those guns together? It's not the Turks. It's U.S. folks. So, you know, when you're buying a gun, you're, you're helping to pay U.S. folks' salary, even if it's, you know, if it's a, it's a, you know, you know, the company is actually owned by Turks. You know, same thing could be said about Glock, really. They got factories here, but guess what? Parent company is in, is not in the U.S.A., and even if the parent company were, there's nothing that says that a foreign made entity can't have businesses in the U.S. So so in the end, it's like there's still foreign made Springfield Armory has a lot of foreign made products that people are buying. You know, um, I, could, I could think of a whole shitload of folks. FN, you know. So, so I mean, there's a lot of gray area there, and people kind of just say, "Well, made in America." I want to buy, you know, buy staccato because it's made in America. I don't give a, f I don't give a fuck about that. Yeah, and you can't say that I'm non-patriotic because I, I'm a ten-year military veteran, and I, and I fought on foreign soil, deployed several times, and my wife, and my father. So we got a rich history. My dad is a 30-year veteran. My wife's a 20-year veteran. I'm a 10-year veteran. So, so I, I understand what sacrifice is. It's not ensuring that you give your money to a product that's only made in the USA. To me, it's 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 volunteering and going and deploying places and ensuring that US interests are are, are met and, and that, you know, bigger countries aren't using smaller countries as stepping stones, you know, that type of shit. So, so, you know, staccato and, you know, for me to buy an equivalent staccato, it's going to cost me a thousand dollars more. The neck, the, 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 the direct equivalent to, of staccato for this gun is a thousand dollars more. Am I getting a thousand dollar more value with that with that staccato if I would have bought it? No. The, the the saving grace of staccato is is that it comes with an extra magazine. So instead of two, it comes with three. The the magazines are more expensive. It's like seventy bucks or some shit like that. Um. And everything else about it is expensive. So if you any modifications, if you look on their pages. They're not cheap. And so so I understand what sacrifice is, but I'm not going to sacrifice my hard-earned money for a $3,000 gum or, you know, uh, uh, so a $2,500 gun. And, and when I can find 90% of that gun in a $1,500 product. That's just me. And, and I'm, I'm not a cheapster either. Uh, when I bought this gun, three weeks later, I bought another $1,500 gun. That's $3,000 worth of 1911. So so I I already know I can buy a gun. And I'm telling you guys that so that you, got, you, don't, you don't think that I'm kind of just bullshitting you. You know, I buy guns because they intrigue me like that, that Alpha Fox Stride S15, that intrigues me. You know, some people say, well, they're, they're shitty. I haven't seen a problem with it yet. And I have probably five or 600 rounds through that gun. Um, no issues. You know, a lot of people, you know, that's the thing. I'm always trying to fight the, against those folks who kind of talk shit about a particular product 
and they don't understand it. They've never touched it. They've never owned it, or they 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 leased it for you know they you know maybe a not leased but maybe they they're borrowing it from a friend or Alpha Foxtrot sent it to them for a month you know to kind of review. And the thing is, you see, you guys see those videos and you, you nine times out of 10, you never see someone come back a two years or three years later and say, well, here's how the gun's doing so far. These are the issues I've had with it. These are the issues that some people have had and I haven't, you know, things like that. So in the end, I'm happy with the gun. I have no issues with the gun. And I will actively ignore folks who are trying to push an agenda and say, well, I had issues with this gun. Anyone else that owns a gun will, might have that issue as well. I'm like, mm, I don't think so. And if I do, you won't see me kind of constantly bitching about it on a subreddit. You'd see me fixing it and then talking about it. Because I'm all for fixing something that can be fixed and then sharing that knowledge amongst other people so that they're not shafted you know there's a lot of people online who kind of like they're miserable they're miserable because of a certain situation and it's almost like they require other people to be miserable as well you know so so a lot of these guys you'll say something like well i'm not having that issue and then they'll say well good for you you know <laughs> so i'm like dude you need to understand that if if it's if it's only you having an issue and it's only three of you and there's like 3000 people that are that are you know subscribed to the the subreddit it's probably not the issue that you think it is most people they 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 join a subreddit because they either have the gun or they're interested in getting it and if you don't see them sharing any grief about a particular pain point of, of that particular gun, then in my opinion, it, it's probably, it, it's feasible to think, well, the gun doesn't have any issues. Or maybe there's a conspiracy, everyone's trying to hide that. You know, 3,000 people all at once, you know, all actively trying to hide a particular issue. No, I don't think so. Come on now. So my plans with this gun is take it out this weekend. I bought 300 or 360 of these. They're one inch uh, little targets. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and utilize it as I did in my training. I ordered some targets like this. And I'm gonna put these there or I can kind of just get some uh, some printer paper and do the same thing and that's gonna help me to kind of get you know acclimated uh, the trigger discipline because I don't go to I don't go to the range every uh, every week or even sometimes even every month there might be several months where I kind of that where I pass I'm sorry about all the noise because I'm trying to find a particular target for you guys to see how we would use it, like this one. You see I have a dot up here. So I I'll probably take these and, and put the dots in random places during training sessions so that I can kind of ensure that I'm focusing on trigger discipline. And uh, with some of these, I can kind of use them in other regards, but, um, excuse me a second here, I'll line this up, I also bought a box of these silhouette type targets, a hundred of those, because my range is charging a couple of dollars, like, like two dollars a sheet, and I'm like, well, fuck that, I went and I bought a box of a hundred, for like, I think 39 bucks save cost a bit um so there's that um and the re the real reason i wanted to kind of use these is because i went to a a local uh 
pistol course and I learned quite a few things. I, that was my first time I've been to a course. Um, the gun um, did pretty well. I had one failure, I'm trying to remember what it was. It's a failure. I think it was a failure to feed, uh, but I used a Blazer 124 grain, FMJ brass round nose. Um, and I bought, I shot maybe 250 rounds in that course. Um, and the gun did great. Uh, I was one, of, there were six people in the course. Uh, almost, let's see, a bunch of them had, everyone had a SIG except me and another girl. And that girl had a, she had a P10C, a CZ. Uh, the other guy, there were two guys who had P365s. And then there were, there were two uh, ladies, uh, a woman and her daughter, her teen daughter. Uh, they were both using X5s. So, um, I was the only, me and the other guy, and another guy who had a, uh, P365, we both had red dots. So, um, <laughs> I thought that that was going to be an issue and, uh, the instructors were like, nope, it's easy mode, but you know what? This, there's no such thing as cheating when it comes to self-defense, right? Anything that's going to make your, your follow on shots quicker, uh, acquisition easier and that that type of thing so um and not saying that you can't do that with with irons and i've done it with irons but uh there's a certain it, it's uncannily easy to be accurate with a red dot uh in case you know for those guys who who disdain optics uh, and for those guys who have never optics my suggestion would be to go out and try an optic if you still disdain it um you know, leave a comment stating why so that we can discuss it because um, I'm all for, you know, sharing an opinion, you know, an opinion on things. And I know some people have a stigmatism, uh, but in the end, if, if you're proficient in shooting irons, there's no there's no reason to not kind of leverage newer technology. And in the end, you could still use irons because uh, with a lot of these guns, you can still have your irons and have an optic. That's not the case with this gun, but the uh, the gun has a built-in uh, rear iron sight as well. So um, that's all I have. Uh, this is the third take of this video. And I think this is the cleaner version of the three and the shortest duration. For those who hate um, 30 minute videos, sorry, um, but not sorry. You know, sometimes you, you know, when, when you're doing things, it's not about, you know, the, the hit and run type of viewers who, who can't stand to watch something more than, you know, uh, two minutes, you know, the ADD generation, so to speak. Um, these videos aren't for you if you don't like them. All right, bye-bye.